There's been a lot of bad college football programs, but Vanderbilt may just be the worst of the worst. Over the past 40 years, yes that's right, you heard me correctly, 40 years, they've only had four winning seasons. They've been a complete laughing stock, and it's got so bad in the recent years, there's been articles stating that Vanderbilt should just drop out of the Power Five. It's also really embarrassing because their home football games turn into away football games because there's more fans from other schools. I understand if one of your athletic programs, whether it's based baseball, football, basketball, they have a couple of rough years. We see it all the time. Think about it. Another team that sucks right now is Kansas, but even going back to 2007, they was ranked inside the top five. So yeah, although Kansas is a laughing stock currently, they weren't always that bad. But for Vanderbilt, what's been so mind-boggling is they've been so bad for so long. And now as to when I'm speaking, the football program is basically dead. How did they get to this point though? It's not quite as simple as, oh, they've been really bad. There's way more to it. There's been a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that people don't know about, and it's the main reason they're falling off today. And in today's video, we're going to take a deep and detailed look at why Vanderbilt's football program is pretty much dead. What's good y'all real quick before we jump into this video we are on the last and final stretch we're under 10,000 subs from 200,000. If you enjoy the content or you simply been watching and you're not subscribed I would greatly appreciate it if you join our family and help us out. I can't stress this enough whenever we gain new subscribers it helps out the channel tremendously. It would also make me happy if you subscribe if not that's cool too and now without further ado let's get into it. Good old Vanderbilt football. Ever since I was a kid, they've sucked, and up until now, they still continue to suck. I'm sure some of you watching this video, you're just like me. I don't think about it a lot, but every year after I see Vanderbilt go 2-11, and 1-11, or 3-9, and I think to myself, man, will these guys ever be good? Like, will they ever get to the point where I look at them playing a team like Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and I say, okay, they might have a chance to win. It's been so historically pitiful, I don't care what team you root for in the SEC, when you see your matching up with Vanderbilt, you automatically look at it and go, oh yeah, that's an easy win. It hasn't been that way the past 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, it's been that way the past 40 years. And if you want to go even farther, it's been that way ever since the 1930s or 40s. To say they've been an absolute embarrassment to the SEC would be an understatement. Most of y'all that have been watching the channel you know i'm an sec fan i also believe the sec is the best conference in all college football no questions asked not even close i already know some people's gonna say well matt you're being biased and no they just happen to be the best conference and also happen to be the conference i root for i think the separation from the sec and whoever you want to label as the second best conference it's not even close it's not, it's really not, but the one team that makes the SEC look bad, and I mean very bad, is Vanderbilt. Nobody talks about it though because the conference in a whole and as a unit, they've been so dominant the past 15 years. And most Southeastern Conference fans, including myself, we don't even consider them really a part of the conference, we just brush them off to the side like they're a nobody. We just kind of look at it like this. Oh yeah, that's Vanderbilt. Don't worry about their football record. They just help us in baseball and academics. When it comes to college football, we don't even act like they're a part of the family. Should it be that way? No, but it is what it is. And it's like that one uncle that comes to the cookout. Or not an uncle, but you all know that one family member that we hope they turn their life around and year after year they continue to be a failure? That's Vanderbilt football. SEC fans all over, they've pretty much given up to them when it comes to football. I got tired of it though. I was like, okay, we know they suck. But I want to know why they suck, and not just an opinion, but some real facts. So your boy Matt did some digging and research, and let's just say this is going to be one of the most interesting videos ever. There's plenty of places we could kick off with this, but let's start off with the location. Not so much in college sports, but in the NFL, in the real world, location matters. I think it does matter a good bit at the college level, but not quite as much as the NFL. And not just the NFL, my bad, but all of these professional teams. Whenever a player or a guy, he enters free agency, where do all of them want to go? To a big market team. Either A, a team in California, B, a team in Florida, or C, a team in New York. California and Florida, it's some of the best places to live and players like going there. You got to keep into the back of your mind. A lot of these professional athletes, they're 20, 25, 30. They're young. They don't want to retire. They want to go out and do stuff on their off days. It's much better to be in Tampa Bay, Miami, than Cleveland, Ohio, or Minnesota where you're freezing your butt off. I understand in New York it's cold, but New York is New York. People like going there. I think college is slightly different because a lot of players rather go to a great program than a great city. Whereas in the NFL, you don't really care 
care so much about your legacy. You're just trying to get paid and live a great lifestyle. Applying what I just said to this situation, Vanderbilt's located in Nashville, Tennessee. Not necessarily a bad place to live. I've been in Nashville a couple of times. It's not Los Angeles big or New York big or Miami big, but it's a nice place to live. Let me put it this way. Nashville isn't really too cold like Minnesota or Cleveland. So it's not like Vanderbilt's located in Michigan or Maine where it's freezing all the time. I wouldn't say Vanderbilt's located in a great location, but it's a good one. It's warm, it's in the city, and I would also say Nashville is a better place to live than Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Nothing against Tuscaloosa, but I haven't heard too many people saying, oh yeah, I want to go to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, but I have heard people say I want to go to Nashville, Tennessee. Putting all that together, I think we can come to the terms with and agree with location shouldn't be a problem. Moving on to our next aspect, I think it's the most important one. Here's what somebody had to say about a Vanderbilt coach. I like the coach, I like what he's trying to do, but he needs players. I've heard time after time people say this about every single Vanderbilt Vanderbilt head coach. Yeah, he's a good person. He could be a great coach, but we don't really know because he doesn't have good players. Over the past five to 10 years, I've watched Vanderbilt play a lot, and no, their talent doesn't even come close to Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, or any top tier program in the SEC that gets a top recruiting class. However, I will say, I don't think their talent is quite as bad as people try to make it out to seem. When I saw and read that quote, I was like, man, is it really that bad? So, I took a look at the facts. Dating all the way back to 2010, they've had an average recruiting ranking of 50 in the entire country. I'm going to repeat that. Their overall recruiting ranking in the entire country has been 50. Make no mistakes about it. That's not SEC good, but overall, that's not terrible. The way everybody tries to make it seem, you would think their recruiting rating would be 100 or 110. And in 2013, the last year James Franklin was the head coach, their recruiting ranking was 26. I'm not saying they had five-star recruits lining up to play, but they had some decent dudes out there. In that 2013 recruiting class, they had four four-star recruits. Obviously, I don't expect them to compete with Georgia or compete with Alabama in the SEC, but if you've had 10 straight top 50 recruiting classes, I do expect you to compete with everybody else. I wanted to share that information with you because I found it rather interesting. What they've done recently has been pretty bad because in the last three years, they've went 3-9, and 0-9, oh and, and 2-10. and 10. Ever since James Franklin left and went to Penn State, this program, they haven't even been close to what he was doing. James Franklin, when he was there only three years, he went 6-7, and 9-4, and 9-4. and four. That's good for Vanderbilt and probably great. Besides James Franklin, who is arguably the greatest Vanderbilt head coach of all time, it's been a repeating cycle. All Vanderbilt does is they hire a guy for three, four, or five years, he loses a bunch of games, and they eventually kick him out. Not really because he's a bad coach, but you just got to make those decisions when your team's losing. If you have a team that goes 0-50, even if you have a great head coach, you got to fire him because if you don't, it looks bad on you. Ever since James Franklin left, who brought in that 26 overall recruiting class, the talent hasn't been as good. There's a reason though as to why these kids don't want to go to Vanderbilt. Here's a little fun fact for you. All of these SEC schools, all 14 of them, have been getting a ton of money to invest in their college programs. 13 of the 14 SEC schools invested a ton into their football programs, new facilities, and recruiting and staff. The one school out of the 14 that didn't, guess who? Vanderbilt. When you don't have a great facility, when your locker rooms aren't as cool as Alabama's and Georgia's and everybody else's in the conference, when when you don't have a great staff, it's a disadvantage and you're shooting yourself in the foot. Let me give you a different perspective so people like me and you, we can relate. Let's say for example, you're going house shopping and you're going to look at two very similar houses. One of the houses though, it's stripped clean. There's nothing in it, no furniture, no nothing. But the second house you're going to look at, it's kind of the same, but the difference is it has furniture and it has a layout where you could picture yourself living there. That's the difference with Vanderbilt and the rest of the SEC. Whenever these kids go visit, visit there, get an offer, there's nothing exciting about the school or their facilities or their weight rooms. They also have a terrible football stadium. They could put money towards that, but they don't. I firmly believe it doesn't matter who you hire to coach Vanderbilt, it's the people up front, the athletic director, that's making all these terrible decisions. And it's been bad, trust me. Like I said, they've only had four winning years in the past 40 seasons. But in 2012 and 2013, when they went 9-4, and four, 
Vanderbilt was a respectable team. Recently though, it's getting to the point where it just appears that the entire athletic board and trustees, whoever and whatever you want to call them, they're neglecting the football program. It looks like they're just saying, okay, we don't care if they go 0-12, we're a baseball and academic school. It's a terrible, and I mean a terrible look, not only for recruiting, but Vanderbilt as a whole. That'd be the equivalent to you have a nice house, you got nice cars, but you never cut your grass. Yeah, you may have some things that are nice, but since you don't cut your grass, everything else, it looks slightly worse. Maybe they could fix this, because according to their new athletic director, they're going to start to invest more, but I got to see it to believe it, and I haven't seen any changes whatsoever. This is an old tweet, but here's what Jordan Rogers put out on Twitter, and like I said, he agrees. The city, it's a great place and location. The city recruits itself, the academics recruit itself, the facilities anti-recruit. Coach Mason, who was a coach who previously got fired, never had a shot to be successful and the next coach won't either without somewhat even ground in recruiting oh yeah before i forget i gotta bring this up like i stated earlier in this video their home games look like away games they don't have a fan base that shows up to the games and really would either ride or die for the program and i can't blame them after seeing how the athletic director and everybody above the ad has handled the money and the budget I wouldn't root for this team either. Here's the thing with that though. Many would assume, okay, well they're not making enough money to make these upgrades. You would be wrong about that because now all these SEC schools, they're bringing in most of the revenue from TV. All these schools are getting millions and millions of dollars from ad revenue when people watch the games. And although, yeah, maybe Vanderbilt fans aren't tuning in, whenever Georgia plays Vanderbilt, the Georgia fans are tuning in and Vanderbilt gets a large portion of that money. Here's the biggest problem and I want you to understand this. Vanderbilt has the money to make these upgrades, they just choose not to. The best word to describe it is they've completely neglected their football program. They don't care about it. It would make more sense if Vanderbilt was a non-Power 5 team or a bottom tier team in the Pac-12, but this is a team in the best conference in the country. If they would make these set upgrades, yeah, it would cost a lot of money, but you would get it back. Let me put it this way. I saw this in an article, so I'm going to assume it's true. They stated that Northwestern had a $260 million upgrade to their facilities. As a five-star recruit, I'm not inclined to go to Northwestern or Vanderbilt, but if I had to choose, I'm going with Northwestern. And what we see a lot of times, and here's what Vanderbilt's missing out on the most, a lot of these three and four five-star recruits, they're like, okay, Maybe I'm not good enough to go to Alabama and start, so let me go to a lower tier team. So for all the two and three and four star recruits that don't go to Ohio State, they say, okay, I'm gonna go to Northwestern and ball out. But Vanderbilt has been so bad and just shooting themselves in the foot, they're not even getting those guys anymore. Once again, Vanderbilt's in a great location. They're in the middle and literally the direct middle of the SEC. But what you're seeing now is all those three and four star recruits that don't wanna go to Bama, Georgia, LSU, whatever Southeastern Conference team, they're not even thinking about considering Vanderbilt. They're going to go elsewhere. The people who are running the operations, they don't care about their football program. They are literally letting it sit there and die right in front of their eyes. It's so sad, it really is, and you can't only help but feel sorry for the players in the locker room. I already know somebody's going to say, well, Matt, they get to make that choice. They chose to go to Vanderbilt. Well, you got to understand a lot of these guys, they're being told things are going to change, and they just never change. I've never seen anything like it, and I know this is kind of random, but Auburn right now, that is a tough coaching job, but at least you're not set up to fail. At Vanderbilt, if you walk in there, you're set up to fail. I think it's to the point, there's only one man that could save Vanderbilt football, and I'm even questioning it, and that's Nick Saban, the greatest coach of all time. And the only reason I think he could save it is because of how legendary he's become and people respect him so much, he could bring in his own five-star recruits and staff. I'm telling you right now though, I'm a Nick Saban guy, I don't even know if he could turn it around. But hey, they said the same thing when he got to Alabama and look what he's done there. Man, oh man, Vanderbilt though, <laughs> is not Alabama, it's way different. I hate to say this, but the Vanderbilt program right now is like the Titanic when it hit the glacier. Yeah, it hasn't sunk quite yet, but it's getting there. It's sinking and we all know it, it just hasn't completely hit rock bottom quite yet. I am very curious, let me know your thoughts down below. Bye, 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 bye.